All right, well, I've owned this now for just about a week and I wanna give you my thoughts as a real world user, no tech review. So first off, I think overall it's been great, uh, but it's had some obvious shortcomings, uh, one of which being programming. So, you know, that's kind of my life for those who don't know. And unfortunately, it's maybe not there just yet. Um, so here's some examples of some screens that I've put together for programming. You know, the problem for me is that I basically just have a larger version of my monitor and I can't wrap it around. I can't have multiple monitors. So at the moment, programming is probably not the best. For video production, it's actually worked out really well. So my previous video and this one, I actually edited primarily in the headset and it's worked great. So that, I think there's some different use cases, some different you know, work studies and or work focuses that I think you'll find may or may not work for you. You know, another example, this is kind of a, a, a weird use case, if you will, but I actually need to fix the snowblower and I have all my parts. I have more parts over here. Now, while I wouldn't recommend doing this if you do any sort of welding or anything that's gonna create sparks, what's awesome about this is I could come over here and I go ahead and open Juno. Well, you get the idea. I could have YouTube running there if my network or, and or this app was working and I could be looking something up and then actually I can see through this pass-through, I can actually work on this snowblower and have, this, you know, have these goggles on. That being said, I don't know if it's the greatest idea because you're, there's, a boat, there's a bit of a delay as you kind of walk around. You may see it with my hand and such. It's, there's a little bit of a delay. Quality is not spot on. Definitely don't do something that is dangerous if you have this headset on because it definitely does mess, you know, mess with your vision just a little bit. I don't know what's happened with Juno, so whatever. I'll look at that later. Um, and then, you know, I could come over here real quick and say, you know, my handwriting is atrocious, but I could basically, you know, I'm, I'm basically proving that I could essentially walk around the house, office, whatever it happens to be, and do things, but keep this on and still have, you know, the ability to actually see and not trip over something. You know, and that brings me to my second point, which is fit and comfortability. That's really going to depend. I ended up having to swap out the face shield and also the face pad so that I could bring it to a, uh, basically, so it's closer to my eyes. Now I have the Zeiss lenses, so I'm actually really on the edge that I can't go with a thinner face pad or a closer face shield. And it works for me, which is great. But when I started out, I had a 25W and there's just the different light seal sizes for those who don't quite own the Vision Pro just yet. And it was too far away, which basically resulted in a really, really narrow field of view. But also as kind of a side effect, the blur, the, basically the focus point was pretty much right in my eyeball. And if I did any sort of a head tilt, like even this much, it would get blurry. Um, I would actually get kind of motion sickness in a way. So I'm glad that I was able to fix that and I've been able to use it for more prolonged times. So here you'll see I have the headset on and if I move my head around, it, uh, it's a little bit of a motion blur. I'm not sure how well this is gonna come on camera, but this is unfortunately an issue with the types of lenses and obviously the price point and a whole bunch of different factors. The technology just isn't there yet to replicate the eye. I know that Apple wants to say that it does and that it, it's, you know, the spatial video and all this stuff looks like your eye can't tell the difference. Maybe to some people, but for me, I can tell the difference. And that's not necessarily a negative on the product. It's just kind of where technology is right now. But, you know, you can see that the UI is very fluid. Um, I have all my different apps open. You can see in front of me in just a second, I'm going to walk around and show you some different apps. And just though, know, functionally, I think it's a great product and it's version one from Apple. So I'm super excited for it. I really have no intentions of returning it. Um, I know a bunch of people on the subreddits and, on, and forums and all sorts of things like that. They're saying they're gonna return it because it's not working for them. I feel bad for them because it's version 1.00. Like we are at the very beginning, it only can get better. So if the money's not too much, uh, I would say stick it out because I, I really think that in seeing the iPhone and all the different products from Apple in the past, like this can only get better. So I feel like you're gonna miss out if you just return it within the 14 day period. So next up is battery life. This may or may not be a problem. If you travel a lot, this is probably gonna be a problem. If you're tethered to a desk, like I am for the most part, then it's probably not gonna be as much of a problem. You get about two hours, but like everything Apple, it's not an exact science. It depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of high-end work or watching you know, spatial videos or 3D videos, things like that, you're gonna see it drop. 
it, the battery life's not the greatest. However, I've seen some people that have some external battery packs, albeit they are massive, and I'm not sure the legalities and everything and regulations on bringing them on planes, but for the most part, there are options out there that you will be able to use your Vision Pro on the go and really have no issues, I would say, overall battery-wise. Now, the next part is going to be travel. I have not had the opportunity to travel just yet, but I have brought the case to Apple a couple times now to swap out some pieces. And it is a large case, but it's a large device, and I know it needs to be protected. There's some third-party cases coming on the market, just like I mentioned in the beginning. We're just, just at the beginning of this, and there's going to be a lot of hardware and a lot of peripherals and things like that that are going to come out. So if maybe the case from Apple is too large, look at some of the third-party options because I feel like you will find something. You know, like I mentioned in the beginning, this is the beginnings of a product. Um, I have some things that I would love to see. I would love to be able to use multiple monitors. I would love to use multiple Macs at the same time. You know, it seems like a weird use case, but if you look here, I have this Mac here, which is my main workhorse, and then I have another one in the garage, which you can see here, that is kind of my auxiliary Mac, and it would be great if I'd be able to set those up. An additional one for me would be I have a server that I could essentially manipulate that, that would be the greatest. So if I could have three Macs connected, might be a little crazy, not even sure if that's technically possible, but it would be a great feature to have if possible. The other one, you saw my video on the Bezel app that you can stream your iPhone to the uh, Vision Pro. I wanna see direct connection from the, app, from the iPhone to the Vision Pro where I can actually manipulate the phone. And then lastly, I'm just gonna say, if you're on the fence to buy this, I'm not necessarily saying watch a bunch of YouTube videos, mine or otherwise, and say, hey, you know what? Now I wanna try it. It is an expensive product. I totally get it. Um, there is that whole fear of missing out, but they sold about 200,000 of them, and you know the population of the US or even the world. So it's a really small subset of people that actually have this right now. And honestly, you know, overall it is tons of fun. Um, I really am enjoying all the different abilities. I'm super excited to see all the new apps that are gonna come out. Um, I'm not thrilled about the fact that the front of this is plastic. Not sure if you saw Jerry Rig Everything, but this actually can scratch fairly easily, so be careful. And it also gets smudges, but fortunately they give you a cloth in the box, so don't lose that because I can already see even here. Not sure if it'll show up on camera, but it's been, you know, I try not to touch the front, but unfortunately, stuff happens, take it off your face, kids touch it, whatever. I would say overall, I'm super excited about it. I'm, like I said, I'm not, most likely not gonna be returning it. I'm gonna keep putting it through its paces. I, I wanna see if I can get into a few hours of usage at a time, be it from eye fatigue or lack of apps or screen real estate or whatever it happens to be. Um, I don't want this to be a gimmick product. I actually want it to come into my work, like actually into my workflow and make it so that it, I can do things easier and better. And then lastly, be able to go on the road and be able to do those same things. So while I don't only make videos on Vision Pro, I am right now because it is new and it's cool and I'm enjoying it. Um, I primarily make videos on programming and coding and really tech and then also cars, more so cars lately. Um, I'm gonna be bringing that back in as well. Actually gonna try to see if I can fit this in, kind of mix them together. We'll see how that goes. So if this kind of stuff interests you, I appreciate you would subscribe, like this video, comment if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.